So if you remember, we compressed the A key to preview what the mesh is going to look like. And we're going to use Adaptive Skin now to start actually making a base mesh for us to work on. So we're going to go over to Adaptive Skin, and you can see Preview is on right now. And that's going to let us kind of see what the, the mesh is going to look like. Uh, the way Adaptive Skin works is kind of like um, a mesh that you can continually edit while in Adaptive Skin mode. And it basically allows you to preserve your topology or your edge flow so that when you make big changes, uh, it'll kind of recalculate and, and preserve those uh, for the later on in the you know really high subdivision levels. And we can kind of see tentative subdivision levels and density over here. So we go up to three, it's going to subdivide for us and even on further. So right now, let's, I would not suggest going above four. Um, it's just a lot to handle. This is basically just to smooth out the general form because you don't want to start in density one because it's like, eh, it's hard to actually do anything. So let's go up to three is usually a good place to start. And we're going to go down to make adaptive skin. So we're going to cook that. And you can see that up here we have an extra tool that says skin z-sphere 1. So when you do that, it actually creates another tool. And you're still in the z-sphere tool. So you have to move over to the other tool. And if you're not sure, you can always press A. And if it switches back, you know you're not in the skin tool. So we can click on the skin z-sphere. And now we're in it. It may not look because obviously it's exactly the same, but you can always switch. I forgot to mention this before. You can always switch between tools instantly. Um, you know, the ring, a star, and it'll still keep, you know, the changes from the other stuff. So I can go back to the skin or the Z sphere one, then the skin. So you can jump back and forth all the time. It's not going to hurt anything. So now you can see adaptive skin doesn't even display, and I'm pressing A, and it's it's staying in the mesh. So we're going to do an extra, this is a really kind of specific process or else it's going to mess things up. So we're going to go open geometry and you can see right now that we are in subdivision 3 and that's because we used a density of 3. Um, but you do not want to be in anything higher than 1 while you're doing adaptive skin. So we have to delete the lower levels. So now what that does is it creates the level that we were currently on as your subdivision one level, your base mesh. And you can tell because this is all grayed out. And uh, sub one basically just means that it is the minimal amount of polygons that you can have in the mesh. Um, you'll find out later that sub one is your base, really important base mesh because you're going to use it for any animation, any game design stuff, that's going to be the actual geometry that you use in anything. Because if you did all this detail and you're into like 4 million polygons, I can guarantee you that once you open up those, the program is going to laugh in your face and crash because it can't handle that much geometry. So the way that we tweak it to kind of give you a spoiler is we do all this detail work and then we export it as what's called a normal map, which we'll get into later. later and it basically tricks the render or any thinking that there's all this detail even though it's a lower polygon mesh. So there's your lesson in uh, behind the scenes stuff. Um, so now that we have it in the lower level we're gonna go down and find DynaMesh which is right here. So what we want to do is we want to change the resolution to about 1080 and uh, make sure the project is off and then we're going to go ahead and turn DynaMesh on by clicking it. So once it turns on, there it goes. So now we have DynaMesh on. And you can already see how it's changed the active points to 600,000. So DynaMesh is going to help us preserve our topology, but what it does is it creates kind of like um, an undefined amount of polygons, it changes based on how much detail you add, which we'll, we'll see. It's really confusing to think about. But basically, you don't want to do like a whole bunch of detail work in this stage because it's going to get remeshed and you're going to lose all of it. So right now, 
the move brush as your best friend. So we're going to go up to brush. We can click M to filter out and find it right there. So now we're actually starting to sculpt things. So draw size is up here. You can also click S on the screen and it'll come up. Uh, intensity or U. And focal shift is kind of like uh, the hardness of the brush if you're familiar with Photoshop brush brushes. If you move down, you can see the circle uh, move out towards the edge or in, and it's basically just the softness of the brush. I usually keep it around zero. It's a good little default. So right now is when we're going to start establishing form within your model. So you don't want to do like a ton of all this detail work. You just want to start moving parts out. And this is where I was mentioning the connectors to the spheres. So now is when you can start editing them because it'll be a lot easier. Woo! So we got a lot there. And you'll ha I'll have to apologize for the, the jumpiness. I'm using a different uh, computer and it, it doesn't agree with the processing. So uh, you can notice that I wasn't working in symmetry. You Usually you want to work in symmetry. So you want to activate that again like we did with the Z spheres in the other video and now you can start that's better. So you can you can see how I'm just kind of adding some form in here and there. I'm not really working on any reference. <clears throat> I'm just kind of adding things in that I want just to show you what's going on. So we can like maybe pull out some pectorals. So you'll notice how like I want to pull these out but I'm facing them so I have to change the camera view. Okay. So now is a time to start adding in little forms and stuff like that. Not too much detail because it's really hard even to add base you know, stuff, because even though it looks like we have this still really low uh, polygon count, if we zoom in, yeah, see those? See all those little squares? Those are your actual polygons. So you still have 600,000 in there. It's a lot. And that's thanks to Dynamesh. But I'll show you the benefits of Dynamesh. We're going to go into the brushes and we're going to choose the snake hook brush right here. So this guy is great for pulling out any extra extra limbs or things like that. I wouldn't recommend it for limbs, but maybe like tentacles or little parts, horns, spikes, stuff like that. So the way it works is it's just going to stretch out the geometry and you're going to pull it out. It's really powerful, it's really useful, but it can also go incredibly wrong and I'll show you. You can already see how the edges are completely messed up, okay? They're not going with the form at all. They're really stretched and later on it's going to be a big problem for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold command and we're going to drag outside and that's all you do. And now Dynamesh is going to work its magic. You can see it's, it's Projecting up there, boom, it's fixed. It's that easy. So that is why you should use Dynamesh, is that way it fixes things later on. So you can start adding in some form. We can we can get like the standard brush. We can sculpt stuff. But you see how there's so much detail in there that it's not a good time to do this because we have all those points. It up the, the polygon count too just because I did the snake hook brush. So right now is not a great time to sculpt. And anyway, and I'll show you what I mean. You can, you know, we have all these points. We could, whoa, okay. Let's reframe it. There we go. So if we get, uh, let's get the, the clay build up brush. So we could go in really small and start adding all these details, okay? But you can only see those details because we have so many points. So I'll show you what happens to them. So let's say we have we have our adaptive skin done, we've pulled out things that might 
mess up our topology. That's what you want to do in adaptive skin. You want to do everything that might mess up your topology. So now we're going to do a quick DynaMesh one more time just to recalculate things and make sure it's all optimized. And boom, okay. By the way, you can hold shift and it'll snap into uh, you know, a directly face on or side view when you do that. It's helpful for when things get out of whack. So now we have all this set, it's time to remesh and actually finally get our base mesh. Okay, so I had to change something quickly because you'll notice that I had Q remesher before and now I have Z remesher which is the newest version so I had to change that really quickly. <clears throat> so now that we have the uh, adaptive skin finished and everything, now we're going to open up the Z remesh which is also in the geometry tab. We're going to go down and find target polygons count <clears throat> and this is by thousands so usually around like four or five thousand is a good place. So right now we're at five. Um, if we have adapt on right here, it's going to create a buffer zone and make less or more polygons based on the amount of detail. So since this one has a bunch of this detail, it's going to try its hardest to add more polygons to preserve it. Um, so we're not having a lot of other detail besides that, so we're going to turn it down to about a four. Um, if you were in the middle of something, um, which you know isn't the best idea, but you could always remesh it with the same or half or double. Uh, but right now we're going to use the to uh, target polygon count to completely remesh it and create a base one or, or a subdivision one level. So we have all that set, and we're going to click Z remesh, and you'll see it up here. And it's going to take a little bit of time, but. Uh, you know, just give it a sec, and then it is also going to create uh, a new. Actually, it might. It should stay the same. I think it stays the same um, model. Your your adaptive skin one. Uh, so that's good to to know. We can find out in a second. If you needed to go back and work on the adaptive skin, you'll want to save out your tool as save as. Um, and you can name it, you know, the adaptive in case you needed to go back and remesh something again later. Um, but if it does create another tool, then you'll have your separate model. So by the end of the process, we would have a Z sphere tool, an adaptive skin tool, and then your base one mesh. So now you see it's it's finished. We lost all this detail. I tried its hardest to preserve it, but we lost a whole bunch of it. So that's why it's not a good idea to put in a whole bunch of detail, because uh, you're just going to lose. All of it in the remeshing process. The other thing it's going to do is if it tries to preserve all of that um, and you say oh crap yeah it it doesn't look good and you try to come in here and smooth it out well now you've got this area that has like these this dense amount of polygons because it tried to to preserve it and then it's kind of going to mess things up in the, in the long run because you have this this chest area that's all you know decently sized polygons and then you have this other area that's that's sorry that's smoothed out but it still has all of these smaller polygons and there's no reason for that uh, so that's why you don't want to put a whole bunch of sculpted detail into your adaptive skin because that's that's what's going to happen so there it is there's our base one mesh you can see it preserved the you know the little stretched out snake hook brush uh, it preserved those pretty decently um, and now you can see if we go back to the move brush now you can see that you know, it's a lot kind of a smoother edit when we do try to pull things out because there's less polygons. You can see here it's, this is grayed out because it says subdivision one. Um, there are no others, so this is you know just kind of like working on a mesh like you would in Maya. There's just this many polygons and that's it. And uh, you can see the difference uh, adding with the clay buildup see how low res that is because there is there are less polygons but it's really great because you can smooth things out a lot better and we'll talk about that more when we get into uh, you know assigning certain uh, details to different levels and stuff you'll see why it's a good idea to add this form at the, at the lower level so next we're going to talk about uh, actually starting sculpting and getting into subdivision levels and all that <laughs>